board meeting. Thank you. I should have waited. <laughs> uh, welcome to the regular board meeting of the Fallbrook Union Elementary School District. I call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Um, we will start with the flag salute. Mrs. Liebes, would you lead us? Please stand. Hand over your hearts. Ready? Thank you very much. Our first item of business is approving the minutes of our September 12th regular meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any changes or comments or questions? Okay, with that, we will start our vote. Mrs. Lieber? Aye. Mr. Favela? Aye. Mrs. Lopez? Aye. Mrs. Lebes? Aye. I vote aye as well. Minutes are approved. We have minutes from the September 15th special meeting of the board. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of that meeting? I'll make a motion. Second. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions? Okay, Mrs. Lopez. Aye. Mr. Fidella. Aye. Mrs. Lieber. I abstain. Okay, and Mrs. Lieber. Aye. And I vote aye as well. So minutes are approved. <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome everyone to our board meeting. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate the interest of our community and our teachers and our staff in our governing board meeting. So thank you for being here. We serve 5,000 students and their families, 800 teachers and staff across nine school sites and the broader North San Diego community. I wanna point out just one item of business that there are no formal agenda items today involving personnel or the superintendent's evaluation scheduled. So the relevance of that is um, we welcome any comments you might have, but as some of you may know, if it's not on the agenda by law, the board members cannot respond. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I also would like you to know that we recently learned that Dr. Singh is interested in moving on to the next phase of her career. And there are negotiations around her departure and we are in the process uh, of beginning to talk about transition, finding and transitioning to a new superintendent. And we are in the very earliest stages of this process. District Council, our legals are involved and they will be handling the negotiations. Our governing board is committed to transparency throughout this process within the confines of the Brown Act and all applicable employment laws. You should know we will not jeopardize this process by speaking out of turn. We will respect the negotiations and the legal process that is ongoing. And we will provide you updates as they are available and appropriate. I wanted to start our meeting with that bit of news. And from that, we move into our hearing session uh, for those of you who've not been to a meeting before, um, we welcome input and very often there are multiple com comments on the same topic. And so there's 20 minutes allocated per topic. And so we have to stop if we get too many, we usually shorten everybody's time to give everyone the opportunity to speak. Um, and um, we listen with an open mind and thank you for being part of our meeting today. So our board clerk, Mrs. Lopez, has our comment cards. Um, would you like to take this part of the meeting? Today? I sure would. Our first speaker will be Dale Leonard. And he is speaking on Sandy. On Sandy. <laughs> Good evening, school board members, district leadership, and everyone in tonight's audience. I speak tonight not as a feat of vice president, PAC chair, or bargaining team member, 
but on behalf of the students and staff of La Paloma. My purpose is to inform and to clarify and to, or to the district and hopefully have a positive outcome for La Paloma. I'm speaking tonight about Sandy La Paloma's own therapy dog. From my understanding, the speech therapist at La Paloma, Alita Leonard, and to be transparent, she is my wife, <laughs> submitted paperwork through her principal at the time, Julie Schluter, and was told she was approved to bring Sandy on campus to use in her therapy with students. This has been going on for three plus years now. At the beginning of this year, another person at a different school site asked her principal if she could bring her dog to school. That person was told no and went to the district office and said that La Paloma had a dog on campus. This led to the district informing our principal, Claudia De Leon, that Sandy was no longer allowed on campus. This happened around the second week of school and we are now into the eighth week of school with no answer from the district, despite many attempts to get an answer. All the paper, paperwork was given to the district to show that Sandy is truly a certified therapy dog trained for the job. Sandy and Alita had to take classes, pass them, and then go before a panel to get certified as a therapy team. This certification was through Pet Partners, which is the country's leader in this field. The team has to get recertified every two years. It was a lot of work, training, and time to get Sandy certified as a therapy dog. Through Pet Partners, we have a blanket $4 million liability coverage, as well as our own additional workplace liability of $1 million that we pay for annually ourselves. This is the difference between a person's pet and a true certified therapy dog. Pet Partners is recognized throughout the United States and internationally as a leader in therapy animal certification. This has allowed Alita to work as a volunteer for Advantage Healthcare Systems in San Diego, visiting some of their facilities. There are three organizations locally that have a volunteer or that have volunteer opportunities through Pet Partners, Community Crossings in Temecula, Bridge Hospice serving all of San Diego, and Renaissance Village in Murrieta. Why am I here tonight? This past Tuesday, I asked my three classes during circle time at the beginning of class if they knew who Sandy was. And I was shocked at how many raised their hands. When you see Sandy on campus, or then I asked a question, when you see Sandy on campus, how do you feel? The following are some of the quotes I got from the students. When I see Sandy on campus, I feel like a better person. I feel happy, relief. I feel not stressed. Makes me feel like I can take on the day. Feels like home when a dog is here. Sandy is just chill. She feels good because she is nice and fluffy. Really nice dog to have around. I feel welcome. I feel happy when I see her, feels like I'm at home. Then I asked each class if it was worth me going to speak at the board meeting to see, to, to, sorry. Then I asked each class if it was worth me going to speak at the board meeting to keep Sandy on campus and it was a unanimous yes. Now mind you, a large majority of these students only see Sandy walking with Alita to pick up her speech students. The benefits of having a therapy dog interact with humans of any age or setting are many, and there is much research to back this claim. Just look at the 48 references at the back of your empirical support for therapy animal interventions pamphlet that you have in the packet I made for you. In closing, I hope that the district recognizes that the benefits of having that's uh, having, sorry. In closing, I hope that the district recognizes that the benefits of having the service that Sandy provides as a licensed therapy dog are irreplaceable and integral to the well being of our students she serves at La Paloma Elementary. Our district prides itself on being on the cutting edge of educational services, and Sandy's service certainly encompasses our values and the needs of our students. Thank you for our time. Thank you.
So I have a question. Can we add this to a future agenda? Let's go through the public hearing and then you have the opportunity at the end of the meeting, as you know, to present okay. items for future discussion. The next speaker is Jessica Botica. And it's also on Sandy. It looks like we have two speakers. We have <laughs> everybody gets two minutes going on. Two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, board members, district, fellow staff members. And um, my name is Jessica Botica, and I had the opportunity when I was teaching in lower IBI classroom to see where Sandy started. That was when um, Alita brought her friend Tressie, and Tressie brought her dog Ruby to come and meet my our, my kids. Lower IBI kiddos in the classroom, I, I think that's something that um, people don't realize or may, not re may or may not realize is that the kids in the lower IBI classroom are some of the kiddos who need the most social emotional support. And really when you see them interact with Sandy or at that time Ruby, like it brightened their day. You know, they, if you want to talk about the escalating crisis, you bring them on. <laughs> that's it, right? Bring them on and the crisis will be defused, de-escalated. And that's something that I, as a trained behavior analyst, cannot do. So knowing that the last few years that Sandy comes into the class, the kids are always like, where's Sandy? Where's Sandy? Like, well, you got to show Miss Sandy, you got to show Sandy and Mrs. Leonard that you're ready to work with her. Sit right up and they're all ready in expected positions. You know, I think that's something that we've been blessed to have. And I would love to see the students in that classroom and the upper IBI classroom and the rest of the students in at La Paloma continue to have. Thank you. Kept it short. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sophia Robles. Good evening. My name is Sophia Robles, and I am the school counselor at La Paloma Elementary School. I began working at FUESD in 2020 when FUESD made the decision to expand the school counseling team to further prioritize social emotional learning given the greater need for student mental health support. I too have seen this need as a school counselor and my mission is to advocate for mental health and social emotional learning supports for my students, which is why I'm here today. At La Paloma, we prioritize SEL and explicitly teach healthy coping strategies such as talking to their counselor, talking with the teacher, or another trusted adult. However, there are many students that may not have the developmental ability to verbalize their concerns, so we teach students to calm and self-regulate their difficult feelings in other ways. Until recently, one such way was by interacting with our highly trained school therapy dog. A multitude of peer review studies have suggested therapy dogs can enhance children's well-being in a variety of settings, such as schools and hospitals. Therapy dogs have been found to reduce physiological symptoms of stress by lowering, lowering cortisol levels, increasing positive emotions, promoting engagement in learning activities, promoting positive attitudes towards learning, and encouraging pro-social behaviors. Social emotional learning supports can take many forms, and providing access to as many of them as possible will only benefit our students by teaching them healthy ways to regulate difficult emotions. I earnestly ask for our students, please allow our therapy dog to return to campus. Her presence has and will undoubtedly continue to provide long lasting positive social emotional benefits for our students. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tressie Armstrong. I hope you have someone who donated time. So she okay. Have four minutes. Good evening. My name is Tressie Armstrong and I'm a retired principal from Carlsbad Unified School District. Hello, Dr. Husing. Um, we had certified therapy dogs through pet partners on our campus for 11 years. I'd like you to consider some of the benefits that we saw firsthand with them. Consider the kindergartner who's clinging to her parent because she doesn't want to get out of the car in the morning. She's scared. She doesn't want to go to class. And I could lean into the car and say, hey, come with me and you can come play with Ruby or, Ro or Rosie. But right out of the car, she would go and we would go pet the dog for a while and off she'd go to class. Consider the behaviorally challenged student that we had when a teacher called and said, so-and-so is up on the roof. And uh, 
standing there trying to get him down off of there. And he wanted nothing to do with that. And I was able to say, but if you come down, you can come and brush Ruby for us. And you can even help sweep out the dog run and clean the dog house. And he was like right down off of there. Consider the student who was really uncomfortable on the playground, but loved reading Harry Potter books. And he uh, was able to sit with the dog uh, during his recesses and lunches until he was comfortable enough to make his back his way back out to the playground with his peers. And he was able to bring his peers in to read with him too, and it made him feel extra special. Um, consider in uh, October of 2010, when we had an active shooter on our campus and the benefit that we saw of multiple therapy dogs in the school and the community reclaiming a sense of safety. We brought 10 dogs in for two weeks straight at recess and lunch. And they ring the playground so that the students would go out to the dogs instead of being afraid to go back out to their campus that they felt had been violated. In these current times of student needs of emotional and social stability coming off pandemic, an appropriate therapy dog program really does make a difference. Mrs. Leonard, a uh, speech therapist at La Paloma, is a good friend of mine. I shared stories of our dogs with her. We brought one of the dogs to work with her speech, speech therapy program, and she saw the benefit it provided her students. She then got her dog, Sandy, appropriately certified to carry on the work with the therapy dog at La Paloma. One of my favorite superintendents, you're not supposed to say that, but <laughs> loved him to death, said to me, if you want me to agree to something that you know is good for kids, don't ask me if we can do it, ask me how we can do it. And at this point, I would suggest considering how you might be able to have Sandy on the campus at La Paloma. She's a definite benefit and she is definitely good for kids. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Lita Lender. Good evening, everyone. As you probably have guessed, I am the owner of Sandy. When I got her, it was not intentional for her to be a therapy dog. She was a little rescue sitting in a little jacket in a, <laughs> in a parking lot in Temecula. As I got to know her, her personality was just such that I thought, you know what, maybe and with trustees guidance and recommendations, Pet Partners was the way to go. And I was so excited to be able to bring her to school. I was so excited for her to be part of our program because when I bring her to school, I'm not there. When she's on campus, adults, kids, Sandy's here. Oh my gosh, Sandy's here. And I'm like, hi, hello, <laughs> right? And that's how it should be. I don't bring Sandy to school for me. I bring her there for the kids because she has a lot of work. For me. I have to watch her all the time. She never leaves me. After I go to the bathroom, she gets to come with me into the stall. When I have to run to make a copy, she has to come with me to the teacher's lounge. As I'm walking around getting kids, she's little. She's got small legs. She's not very fast. I have to carry her because I'm like, I am falling behind on my time. We need to move. And the kids actually kind of think it's funny that I'm carrying her. Um, but it's for the kids the interactions, the language, the practice, the speech, the working just to pet her is amazing. I have helped kids who are eloping get back to class by just saying, here, will you hold the hand of her leash? She needs to go back to your classroom. They've been out there for a half an hour. Sandy does it in two minutes. Um, walk in a classroom, a student's been trying to get a, a writing assignment done, writing two words for 45 minutes. She walks in. If you finish it, you can pet Sandy. It's done in 30 seconds. She's spent a lot of time in the IBI class. I think that's where she's made the most impact. She's seen chairs thrown, desks flipped over, kids yelling, screaming. She sits and watches and takes it in. She is amazing. Um, so through all of this in the waiting, I've been really surprised that I have not been approached about Sandy by anybody. No one's asked to talk to me about my program. No one's asked to visit on campus to see what she does. No one's asked to meet Sandy. No one's asked to come and talk to the staff at my school to see the impact she's making. No one's asked to come to talk to the students to see how they feel about her. And 
it's been a long time. Every day I get asked by the kids, where's Sandy? Because her bed is still in my room. Her crate is still in my room. Her toys and her treats are still in my room. And they would like to know when Sandy's coming back and I don't have an answer because I don't know. And I was asking some of my kids today, they were little, they're first graders. So they knew Sandy last year. And some of them, I asked them, and this is just the common word, how does Sandy make you feel happy? That is the common thread. How would it feel? How would you feel if Sandy couldn't come back? I would be sad. One of my little ones said heartbroken. Just so sad. So she does make an impact. And I would hate to see her not be able to come back and not be part of my program. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker is Leticia Maldonado Stamos on the community event day of the dead. Actually, I'd like to talk about the other one first. Okay. Uh, board responsibility. Yes, okay. thank you. Are you gonna do one behind the other? Um, sure. Well, can I go just a little bit later? Yeah. Okay. I great. just want to know where to go. Yeah. Um, first of all, let me say, I, I wish Sandy were here, standing beside me. <laughs> <laughs> you will hear various constituents on various topics. While none of us shared notes, as I was pre preparing my comments today, I decided to change course and address the core of what I believe most of us are concerned about, and that is transparency. If we as commun community members are concerned about the superintendent's contract and attached salary and increases, it's about transparency. It's also about public trust and holding up your fiduciary responsibilities, but all of that basically goes back to transparency. If we have concerns about our students' progress or anticipated litigation, it's about transparency. We've had issues with transparency in this district for years. The Elaine Allen lawsuit is a prime example of that. And frankly, for many of us, it points back to how the superintendent and the district's legal counsel has advised the board in the past and now you. I personally do not feel that the guidance you receive is always in the public's best interest. I think I understand how policy and protocol and regulations and law work. I also have served on boards, but I have attended numerous board uh, meetings for every single government agency in Fallbrook, and that one is as unresponsive to the public as FUESD. There is what the law requires and what the law allows. Doing only the minimum of what is required is not transparency. It's not being responsive. I also understand that we members of the public can be very disruptive in these proceedings to the point of causing the work of the board to be impeded. We saw examples of that last year. My greatest concern today is not the superintendent's salary or your unwillingness to do something about it. My concern is that you won't be here after 2022 to do the necessary work. Speaking for myself, I want you sitting there and Dr. Singh sitting over there with a new contract that best serves Fallbrook and our students. Which brings me to my last point this evening. Just about every person present has made a choice to be here. They choose to come to this meeting. They choose to live and work here. They, you all choose to serve as trustees. My husband and I chose to make our home here and to continue to make this our home as long as we are able. In that same vein, each person here can choose to work elsewhere, live somewhere else, quit serving as board members. Some folks can even send their kids to other districts or schools. It might not be easy, but we can all make that choice. However, the vast majority of the students in this district and their families don't have a choice. This is where they must send their children to get a solid education. We owe it to them to be here and to speak up and you owe it to us to listen to us, listen to what we have to say and give us credit for being here. Thank you. The next speaker is Sandra Forrest on board expenses. Well, with the announcement at the beginning of the meeting, it puts a different light on some of the comments I was going to make, but there's still unfinished business. Um, 
and it is involved with transparency and it also affects violations of the Brown Act. And we were told that the board's going to follow all the Brown Act provisions. And I am a trusting person and I've always trusted that, you know, protocol will be followed. But that hasn't been the case, folks. We trust that it's gonna be followed. And I'm gonna tell you about something that happened last two weeks ago when I was here. Public school board meetings, special meetings, closed sessions, and even the wording on board meeting agendas have very specific requirements to follow. The FUSD superintendent and board president set the, dis set the agenda for district meetings, labeling any high level employee evaluation or salary, and I assume that would mean compensation, et cetera. Labeling any such item as personnel is a direct violation of state mandates. These requirements and limitations are detailed in the Brown Act. Board decisions about high level employee evaluations or salary must be conducted in a private, must be conducted in a public session and the name of the high level employee must be stated on the agenda. The agenda of September 12th, 2022 listed this item, closed session personnel, it should have been listed instead as closed session superintendent evaluation. Was this done to prevent the public from having an opportunity to comment? Earlier last week, I hand delivered a letter addressed to President Lundin about the need to cure and correct the violation on the regular board meeting agenda of September 12th mentioned above. I hand delivered it because the letter states that this is to be addressed at the October 3rd meeting today. It's not on there. I was told that Dr. Singh was out of town at Texas to a leadership convention. Board expenses, I would like to know the purpose of last week's leadership conference in Texas who paid for the plane tickets, the hotel accommodations, the rental car, the meals, et cetera. Credit card statements always provide a detailed account of all charges. And the one used for district events lists this information too. How about an audit of the district's credit card, charge, credit card charges regarding Dr. Singh's trip to Texas last week? Your time is up, I'm sorry. Apologize. Well, I... I had prepared statements and it was changed, but I would also caution, you owe it to the public to let us know if you're gonna give Singh a big fat end of the year bonus, like the high school and other people have gotten. You owe it to the public to tell us what's going on. Thank you, we will do our best. And you owe me a 30 day deadline notice on the letter I sent you about the Brown Act. That still has to be addressed. Our next speaker. Our next speaker is Sherry Weishar. Sherry? I'm sorry. Oh, she left? Okay. Uh, then our last speaker is Leticia Maldonado Samos on the community event Day of the Dead. Thank you. Um, again, I just want to, um, to thank you for the opportunity to speak. As you know, this month is Hispanic Heritage Month. And on October the 30th, which is a Sunday, um, Voces of Fallbrook will be hosting a Day of the Dead event at the Masonic Cemetery here in Fallbrook. It's from 2 to 6 p.m. And the theme is honoring and offering of our, our loved ones that have passed on. This is a wonderful opportunity for people um, in the, of the public and the community to, to take their children, to take their family out to the cemetery. And um, there's, there's, we are going to be providing food and entertainment and um, crafts for the kids. Um, there's gonna be a little raffle. It's all free to the public. Food is free, everything is free because we're out looking for money and donations and um, you know, selling little trinkets here and there to make money. Um, we will be 
uh, again, it starts from two to six. People will be going there on their own, of course, to clean up and, and decorate their loved one's um, uh, grave site. We'll also have low rider cars in, um, there to, to just um, amplify the, the culture. And um, I bring this up today here because it is a great opportunity to, um, to educate and inform and, uh, and just share the cultural um, beauties that the Latino culture has on this particular day. Um, and there's other cultures that also celebrate Day of the Dead in, in other ways. Um, and we plan to have a table there, an educational table that will give information to the public about the importance of this day in the Latino culture and also other cultures. So I would like to formally invite everybody to come um, have a taco with us, watch the dancers, um, buy a raffle ticket, and, uh, and just enjoy the day. Thank you. We have another comment. Apparently, we have another speaker. Okay, we can do that. Thank you. Hello. This is Angie Madsen and speaking on Sandy the dog. Yes. Hello. Sorry, I'm late, everybody. I would just like to say that uh, Sandy the dog, um, Alita Leonard's dog, is truly beneficial to La Paloma. She is one of the best behaved dogs I've ever had, <laughs> ever seen, ever petted. I was a dog sitter for five years, so I love dogs, but that's not why I love Sandy. I love Sandy because she is very calm with everybody. She'll match your energy. She'll meet you. She'll greet you. She's very respectful. She's not a big dog either. She's a very little dog and she's not super energetic. She's a little bit older and she's good with all kids all kids. Um, I imagine, I'm not in the speech room, but I imagine that she brings everybody in speech just joy. <laughs> uh, two of my kids are in speech with Alita and they love Sandy. But before one of my kids was in speech, my I had a two-year-old come with me every day to school because I was on the PTA for ever now. And even <laughs> when my son was two, Sandy would come up and be like, oh, hello. And be so sweet. They established a relationship, him and also my older son and Sandy. And we've brought Sandy treats. We thought about making treats for Sandy. We brought her toys. She's like in our hearts, like maybe more than some teachers. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that I think Sandy the dog truly can uplift and just benefit La Paloma a ton. And that's that's the main thing I wanted to say today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, reports from the board. Um, Mrs. Levis, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I have mostly been very busy um, because uh, yesterday was Salt Lake Land Conservancy Stagecoach Sunday, and um, I was working hard on that. Um, it was a great day. It was beautiful weather, and we had lots of um, wonderful community members that came out and raised money not only for the open space preserves that the FLC owns, but also um, the environmental education program that we provide for students uh, in the school district. Um, I was able to also attend the first in-person PTA meeting at Potter Junior High a couple weeks ago, and that was really nice to meet the PTA board. They're amazing. They do, they've already got the whole year planned out, Red Ribbon Week, everything to the um, eighth grade field trip at the end of the year, which I can't believe is already happening because uh, it's my eighth grader. Um, so that was nice to, to finally meet um, those ladies face-to-face. -face. Uh, I was able to attend a voter registration event at Fallbrook High School and saw a lot of our former students there and hopefully registered. We had a little QR code that they could scan and um, students or, or young adults can um, pre-register when they're 16 or 17. And then when they turn 18, they're automatically um, registered to vote and they get their ballot in the mail. So hopefully we got a lot of kids registered. Um, and I attended the State of the Chamber, uh, Fallbrook Chamber of Commerce dinner, um, I guess a week or so ago. And I was really, I got to talk with some of the um, Fallbrook Food Pantry staff and board members. And I was really glad to see that our um, CNS department is working closely with them to collaborate on 
parent cooking classes, which I think are um, ELAC, or DLAC um, parents when they came and spoke, that was one of the things that they wanted. And um, so we're, we're considering using their teaching kitchen and I think it's gonna be a great co collaboration. Um, and then I just wanted to mention that um, I saw that most of the schools are having their parent teacher conferences later this week. And so I encourage all parents to make time to go um, meet with their students, teachers. We know that the best predictor of student success is parental involvement. So um, it's an invaluable chance to find out what's going on in the classroom. And we, in our district, um, all the conferences are student led, which is really cool to see as a parent. And that's my report. Thank you. Mrs. Lopez. Um, I was also able to attend the uh, chamber event uh, representing both the school district and Rally for Children. Um, so it was a, a very nice evening. Um, I was able to speak to a couple of people there that um, work in education and are trying to um, increase student reading by offering free books to all schools. So um, hopefully that's something that we can have a further conversation with, uh, with a couple of people that I met at that event. Um, and then uh, the Rally for Children uh, fundraiser, the one fundraiser that uh, Rally for Children does each year to provide the funding and the supplies for the arts in the park is coming up. That will be October 20th. So if anybody's interested in that, you can certainly look at the Rally for Children website. And then I will also be participating at the Harvest Festival, both representing um, FUSD and uh, Rally for Children on October 23rd. And we will have a booth there for stu or for children and um, everything's free. So we have pumpkins and we have masks and we have things that the, the kids will be able to decorate and take home with them. So um, we're looking for a, a wonderful event there. And on a personal note, I was able to um, meet my very brand new granddaughter who was born two days ago. Oh, that's very happy. Savella? Uh, sure. Um... It's been a busy month, um, but I also want to mention that um, we received uh, quite a bit of emails. I want to um, let folks know that we do read your emails. Um, that's another great way to communicate with the board and express your concerns. Um, it doesn't limit you to the three minutes, or, you know, or whatever you say. We, we read them. We read every word. Um, so spend some time making sure that um, uh, those comments were received. Um, just um, in terms of uh, school activities, uh, it's been a very busy month at May Ellis. Um, um, I have two children that, that attend, a sixth grader and a third grader, uh, and they had us on campus quite a bit this month. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a, re a leadership rally that happened in September. Um, it, it coincided with uh, Latino Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, the students uh, put on a, a beautiful uh, dance uh, from uh, Guatemala. I really appreciate seeing uh, the uh, different culture and um, traditions that make up the um, the Independence Day. But you know, this month is really marked by Independence Day for both where Guatemala, Central America, and Mexico. Not it's not just limited to Mexico, but quite a few countries in um, Latin America um, uh, receive their independence on on these days. So. I, I was really glad to see that um, observed at Mayalis. Um, I also attended a watchdogs meeting at Mayalis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great program for for fathers. Uh, dogs meaning dads of great students. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a great program. Uh, the The program invites uh, dads to uh, volunteer at at the school uh, one day at least, you know, or whatever uh, uh, whatever um, the father can commit to whether it's half a day or full day. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity to be in the classroom, to read to students, or just be on, just be an extra um, watchdog on, on, on the playground, supervising. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity. I'm really glad that Mail this is offering this, this program there and I encourage um, more dads to get involved. Uh, and there was also a fun run and lunch on the line in the same day. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. The fun run is an opportunity to donate. Uh, I think it's put on by the PTSA, right? Um, they did some great work. Um, lunch on the lawn um, allows us to have lunch with our, our students and during lunchtime and attend the bookstore, which was also operated by the PTSA as well. Um, so great opportunities um, uh, for uh, families to get involved. Um, yeah, uh, besides that, 
Day of the Dead. I want to echo what uh, Leticia mentioned. I'm also involved with Day of the Dead. Um, it's a, it's a great um, celebration. Uh, you know, it is held at the cemetery, so there is you know the intent to really keep the event as in, uh, uh, to its traditional sense, right? Um, I have loved ones that are buried there, um, and that's largely the reason um, why the event does not allow for any selling to occur. Um, we need to respect uh, our loved ones who are there. And so what I really like about the event that we put on is that it aims to keep it to its, uh, to its roots, yet with our own fabric flavor. Uh -huh. um, so, and, and offering is the, um, is the main, um, I guess I don't wanna say theme, but it is what the uh, uh, event is about. Um, you know, it's an offering for, for our loved ones. It's an offering for our community. We wanna uh, really share that with, with the community as well. And finally, I want to mention that um, I started attending UCSD. I'm part of a master's program for Latin American studies. So if I didn't have enough to read already, I got oh. <laughs> <laughs> to read. <laughs> uh, so I've been saying on top of all my reading. Just want to all know. Well, this week, this month, this um, is uh, the Hispanic Heritage Month, right? And I think they did a they did interviewed you. And they will be rolling that out. So he's very modest, <laughs> not, but it will be probably on our website. And it's already um, live, now. It's live now. Thank you. And that's beautiful yeah. job. You've added that banner to the website. So thank you. Um, so I have, I also attended the state of the chamber and um, I also am working with the fall book food pantry to provide an ESL course in the evening. Palomar College provides one um, in the daytime, but there was nothing being offered in Fallbrook in the evening. And so we've been able to put a fabulous teacher in place there and she's teaching an open uh, enrollment, meaning uh, students can join at any time an adult ESL class. And um, it's going on for 16 weeks. They're in their seventh week. So it's, it's a wonderful program. There's <clears throat> Palomar is also doing on their main, their um, Fallbrook campus, not their main campus, but their Fallbrook campus, they also have really nice um, selection of ESL classes, but oftentimes family members cannot get that across the freeway to that location. So we're trying to bring the class here as close as we can. Um, and then I also spoke with the three gentlemen that um, provide free textbooks. If you will just invite them to a program at the school, they will provide a free, uh, free not textbook, reading book for every child. Mm -hmm. And I have six or seven copies of every one of their handouts. So between the two of us, I think we can figure this Absolutely. out, right? Absolutely. And um, I'm also on the Palomar College Advisory Committee um, for Fallbrook. Um, as you know, Palomar is located in San Marcos, but they have some uh, satellite campuses, one of them being over on the other side of the freeway. That is the one that services our community. And they have a budget to build out of, right now they're all in portables. Even though the portables will be left there permanently, they're gonna be building a beautiful campus. And on October um, 19th from one to two, and on October 20th from nine to 945, they're having a community and business leaders event. So if any of you are interested in going, um, I can give you more information about how to register and it will be rolling out their um, the latest version of what their vision is for that new campus. So we're really lucky because we're a very small community and we have a community college now really right across the way from us. As you know, up until a few years ago, all of our community college classes through Palomar are being taught at the high school. So to have our own campus, our own buildings, it, it's really gonna be nice for Fallbrook. And that is the end of my report. Thank you. There's so much going on right now. <laughs> Paul, it's, uh, you know, we, what did they say? Many, but mighty. We may be small, but uh, there's a lot going on in this community and it's very, very exciting. Um, I'm just going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to pass on my comments and allow us to move directly to the next item on our agenda, which is, uh, I don't think, do we have a report? Uh, passed on from the superintendent to the anything she There's nothing to report. Okay, thank you. Good. All righty, we'll move directly to our next action item, 
Uh, this is a, a resolution to become subject to uniform public construction cost accounting procedures. Mm -hmm. It's resolution number 04-22-23. And uh, do I have a motion to approve that resolution? I'll move to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? No. Mrs. Liebes? Aye. Mrs. Lopez? Aye. Ms. Ricabella? Aye. Mrs. Lieber? Aye. I vote aye as well. Motion carried. All right, let's see what we have on our next page. Um, we have three information items. Uh, the first is the district's initial proposal to Fallbrook Elementary Teachers Association, FEDA. Uh, we've got a lot of teachers here today and also some of uh, FEDA's uh, leaders in various roles. So welcome and uh, we're Always glad to have you here and thank you for being here. And this is um, the information item. It's what's called Sunshine. We put out there what we're interested in and then you send us yours, which is the next part, which is uh, your initial proposal to the district. So those are information items only. And the third is for the California School Employees Association. Those are our best writing for the um, backbone of our schools. So um, those are information items, no action is necessary, but we do have a couple of action items under educational services. Um, the first is the sufficiency of instructional materials. As some of you know, there's legislation that requires school districts every year. An information item before that. Oh, you're right, workshop and conference attendance. Thank you. There was um, information about the um, recent workshops and conferences that staff um, attended. So that's an information item. Um, the next one is action. And I, uh, the Williams Act requires uh, schools to be certified that they are in fact providing students with all the educational materials in the classroom that's required. And um, it's, uh, it's important because there have been instances over time when districts have not done that and the kids have to share books or don't get to have books that you know they can take home or the books are really outdated. So um, but that's never an issue for us. We have an outstanding department and um, that's never an issue. So um, it's to uh, approve the resolution 05-22-23, um, certifying this, the instructional materials have been sufficient for this school year. Do I have a motion to approve? to approve. I'll oh, second. Mr. Bella. Thank you, Mr. Bella. Um, any questions, comments? Okay, Mr. Bella, your vote. Aye. Mrs. Lieber? Lieber. Yes, I think we vote for this. Aye. Aye. That's okay. Um, Mrs. Lieber? Aye. Mrs. Lopez? Aye. And I vote aye as well. That motion carries. <clears throat> um, Red Ribbon Week. Um, its theme is celebrate life, live drug free. Uh, it's an alcohol, tobacco, and other drug and violence prevention awareness campaign, which is observed annually in October. This year's theme is celebrate life, live drug free. And the mission of the campaign is to encourage children, families, and communities to live healthy, happy, and drug free lives. Do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Um, Mrs. Liebes? Aye. Mrs. Lopez? Aye. Mr. Pavella? Aye. Mrs. Lieber? Aye. Okay. Aye as well. Thank you. And that moves us to the uh, consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Make a motion. Okay. Oh, okay. You can second. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, any questions or comments? I just want to say I asked two pages of questions and I appreciate the answers. And, you know, I know it takes a lot of work for you to do this on a Monday when you're getting ready for this meeting. But I just want to let you know how much I appreciated those, those comments because some of it was just not understandable and now it is, so thank you. I was really glad to see all the SPED assistants that moved from mm -hmm. part-time to full-time and new ones and that was really great news. I also love <clears throat> all of the enrichment yeah. contracts that we're able to do thanks to that extended learning opportunity right. and money. Now we're looking at intercession really camps. We yeah. were yes. we had our summer and now we have 
after school, and then we're already looking at intercession. And Three that's intercession so things. exciting. Um, so do I have, we have motions. Uh, anything else, any other comments, questions? No, okay, let's go with the vote. Uh, Mrs. Lieber. Aye. Mr. Favela. Aye. Mrs. Lopez. Aye. Mrs. Lebus. Aye. I think mine as well. Uh, that takes us to our last section, uh, future agenda items for consideration. Yes. I would like to add Sunny to our future agenda item. Sandy. 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 Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it sounds like a sunny dog. <laughs> she. Um, yes. And Sandy. And just, I think we should look at it at a bigger picture to see um, not only if this is not something effective at one school, but something possibly we could consider expanding. It sounds like a program that would really benefit all eight of our campuses. So maybe we could get at a bigger picture. Thank you. I also have a suggestion as well. Sure. I was thinking, um, considering since I'm a parent at Mayelis, I have, uh, you know, have access to all you know all the events and all the great stuff that happens and um you know, I was thinking about the you know the rest of the board here um so I, I wanted to suggest either we if we can propose maybe adopting a school so that way each of us can be informed about these events and be able to attend when they happen yeah, or yeah. or just have you know, well it's, I, I'm sure schools are very busy but if, if there's any way for us to hear about all the stuff that's happening so we can attend you know, a lunch on the lawn is just, you know, mm -hmm. very opening, very, you know, the, the, all the parents attend. It's, you know, it's a great event just to be able to observe and, you know, anything else that, you know. This is a suggestion. Let's see if there's a way we can get something like a master calendar, if there were an easy way for schools to contribute to that. Mm -hmm. I always get very excited when I hear you're describing the events both of you go to because your kids are in school and I go, oh, that sounded like fun. I would like to go into that. So I think that's a, a really good suggestion. Mm -hmm. And it at least gives us the opportunity to see what fits our calendar and when we can go. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we can do that then. Well, with nothing else, our meeting is adjourned at 6.53. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.